to Melissa Darnay Uncorked. In the tasting room today, we're talking about which wine pairs the best with a goat cheese. With me today are my friends Andrea and Gunter from Germany. Now they've rented from us several times in Panama and because they're foodies, they've become friends. So Gunter and Andrea, welcome. Hi. <laughs> in fact, they love Panama so much, they've already decided they're coming back next year. Of course, we do. <laughs> One thing I love about goat cheese is it's very complex. It has flavors that are both earthy and tart, but yet it's not one of those cheeses you want to eat all by itself. It really needs a companion before you put it in your mouth. Unlike other cheeses, it can go savory or sweet. Today we're going to be trying goat cheese four different ways. We're going to have it by itself with an herb infused olive oil, drizzled with honey, and stuffed inside of a date. We're gonna compare with two wines and see what wins. The first wine we're going to pair is the Gerard Bertrand Cote de Rosé. Now this is a beautiful rosé from the Languedoc region of France. And what about I, I love about this wine is look at this bottle. It has this beautiful rose motif on the bottom of the bottle. And then when you open the stopper, the stopper is made of glass. It's more like a beautiful, luxurious perfume stopper than an actual wine bottle. Now at only $15 a bottle, not only is the wine fabulous, but it's gonna be one of these bottles you're gonna to wanna to keep and reuse again. So let's go ahead and smell it. Oh, very nice. Mm, that's really, yeah, yeah. Doesn't it smell good? To me, it smells like summer in a glass. Very fruity. Very nice. It's nice Fruity yeah. and floral. You're going to have the summer stone fruits like peaches. Mm. You're going to have grapefruit. Also, you're going to have a beautiful floral smell of roses, the Cote de Rosé. And you're also going to have a beautiful uh, aroma of cassis, which you normally only get in a Cabernet Sauvignon. So go ahead and take a sip. Gunter was ahead of me. He was already sipping. <laughs> It's like I have wine you in my hand. Me. You what do you want me to do? <laughs> well, I want to drink because she's talking and talking. No, I behave. I behave. Okay, I'm, you'll I'm, behave I'm, I'm, now, this yeah. much. <laughs> what do you think, Gunter? It is not a heavy wine. It's a very light wine. You can drink it easily. Now, if you go to the south of France and you want to have lunch at a really shishi place that's going to set you back a couple hundred euros, every single person in the restaurant is going to be drinking a rosé wine. Exactly. So it is, yeah. that's yeah, the thing exactly. to drink. When you smell it, you feel like being in Nice or in the Côte d'Azur. Exactly, um, a $15 really, yeah. vacation to the Côte exactly. d'Azur. Yeah. <laughs> so now I want you to go ahead and try one of the goat cheeses or try all of them, it doesn't matter. And tell me which one you like the best as you pair it with it. Mm. This is delicious. With the honey. With the honey. Yes. That's my favorite. To me it's honey. very easy. This is a very strong one. Uh huh. With the olive oil, the yeah. infused olive oil. I had a feeling you would like that. In fact, I almost put some garlic in there. But exactly. I, <laughs> so if you do this at home, you can do the olive oil, infuse it with. I put I put rosemary and crushed red pepper with a nice olive oil, some black pepper. You can also add a little bit of garlic. Yeah. Yeah. And they can add a little bit of wine. Huh? And you can add a, yeah, absolutely add a little bit of wine. The second wine we're going to try is the Vico Riviera. 99. Now this is a wine you probably haven't tried yet. This is from southern Italy, from the Campania region, and it's made 100% from the Falangina grape. Now Falangina is a grape just like Chardonnay, just like Pinot Noir. This wine is a, an ancient Roman grape that's about 2,000 years old. They can trace it back to, they think, Greece over 2,000 years ago. So let's have a modern day Shakespeare write a play about this wine because it was also grown in the volcanic ash of Mount Vesuvius. So really an interesting, fascinating history. Go ahead and smell it. Tell me what you smell. Pear? Yeah. Yeah, apples and pears. Yeah. If you look at the normal flavor profile of let's say a Sauvignon yeah. Blanc, it's going to be apples and pears with a bright acidity. So this is going to have the same flavor profile of a Sauvignon Blanc, just with a more rich history. Now go ahead and taste it. Feel the acidity in your mouth, your mouth just starts to water. 
and the long finish. The way you tell finish is how long the taste of the wine stays in your mouth after you swallow. This one's got a good 30, 45 seconds after you swallow, you can still taste it. Yeah. Very good. So go ahead and try it with the goat cheese and tell me what you think. The white wine for me is, goes with this one. With the herb olive think? oil. With good. the savory. Good. Yeah. yeah. No wonder y'all just gather. <laughs> <laughs> you like the same things, it's a good thing. <laughs> so both wines, very different, yeah. both very good, and it does different things to the goat cheese. So if you're looking for the best wine to go with goat cheese, just experiment and see what you like. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure and press the subscribe button and then click the bell icon. That way you can have wine with us on a regular basis. Until next time, cheers. cheers. cheers.